One of the best ways to bring life to your website is through animations, and without a doubt the best library out there is GSAP. The catch being that GSAP is very much focused on developers, it requires a lot of JavaScript, and for people who aren't exactly adept at development, <coughs> then you might find it very challenging to get that on your website. Now, thanks to the team behind Oxy Ninja Core, which is a CSS class framework for Oxygen, they brought us a new tool called Motion Page. This essentially enables you to set up GSAP animations on your site. It works with Oxygen and many other page builders right now out of the box. And what we're gonna do today is take a first look at it. So I have, of course, played with this a little bit so I could be reasonably familiar for this video, but we're gonna create an animation on a popular nationwide website. I'm gonna show you something that I came across that's pretty cool. Before we get started, I wanted to mention two things. First of all, if you don't already have the plugin, please consider using the link in the description below. It, of course, does give me a small kickback. It helps me tremendously, and it also helps you as well get the plugin. So I would appreciate that. And then also, if you're new to the channel and you're not already subscribed, please do so. My name is Jonathan, I'm so happy to have you here and let's get rolling. Okay, so here I am down here in the corner and what you're looking at is of course the tesla.com homepage. So they have some really cool animations. They're very simple, but they bring some really nice life to the page and I liked it a lot. So I've been waiting a long time to make this video and to show this to you. So if we refresh here on the Tesla page, this heading moves up and makes space for this text, which is uh, set as an opacity of zero when the, the page first loads. Then if you notice, we'll refresh again so you can see this, these two buttons come in from the left and right sides respectively. And then this little arrow down here has a continuous bounce, which is really neat. So let's look at that again. Check out the buttons down here. You can see they come in from the left and right edges. And then that button, like I said, has that bounce. So what I've done is tried to recreate a relatively faithful you know, copy of this site in Oxygen and gone ahead and applied these animations using Motion Page. I'll get into the interface for Motion Page and how to do this. We're gonna basically recreate this a second time, but I wanted you to see that all of this is possible. So check this out when I refresh, my heading moves up, make space for this text that has the opacity just like the other way was zero, and then it rolls all the way up to one automatically. Then of course I have these two buttons, the fonts and stuff don't look the same and I just noticed the text is wrong, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And then of course I have an arrow that has this continuous bounce effect. Now it's not pixel perfect, but I wanted to, to show you that you can create something like this relatively easily. Now the other thing that I have is another animation which is really cool. So if we look at this, the way that I created this was creating one animation and using the GSAP stagger functionality and it replicated that animation to all of these. So I didn't have to create it six times. I only had to do it once and it applied to all of these. So this I actually found on a popular YouTuber called Let Me Know, his website. And um, this was just a cool effect that I thought was really neat. Now, of course, these animations we're looking at right now are not super complex, but in the future, you can imagine I'll be doing many videos on this and we'll get more complicated things. We can do page animations such as page entrance and page exit. There's a lot of things that are in GSAP that are not currently in the plugin, but are planned for future releases. So I'm super excited about this. The team behind Oxy Ninja is David and Rados, and those two are awesome. They've just really brought Oxy Ninja a long way and it's very well respected. So I have no doubt that this app is going to do the same thing for them as well. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a look at the motion page interface. So of course, when the plugin is installed, what you're gonna do is build your layout in your builder of choice. In my case, I use Oxygen Builder, but you may use Elementor or something like that. And then you can start creating the animations. So you would just build your layout like normal, leave everything static. You can apply basic hover effects and that sort of thing if you want to, but motion page can do that as well. So you would just click on motion page. You get this sweet little animation. And these are the two timelines that I was working on yesterday. So what I'll do is go ahead and I'll just click on this homepage intro animations. And we're gonna take a look at these animations. You can see right off the bat, the interface may feel a little bit overwhelming, but it's almost like a video editor. So down here, we have this timeline, which we can actually, somewhere in here, there is drag handles to make this bigger. Unless, <laughs> I don't know where it went. Um, there was, at least I thought there was drag handles. Nonetheless, your timelines exist down here and there isn't much for you to see behind my head there. So don't worry about that. Essentially what we have is this is a page load animation. So if we look up here in the top left, we have page event chosen. Our drop down is page load and page exit. We have load selected at this point, and then we can do before load and after load. This actually should be set to after load. So obviously it worked fine on the front end, but I would want this animation to start after the load, but 
That said, this may affect your content if you have tons of content to be loaded. Then what you do is you pick how the animation should start. So the from setting is basically the state that it begins at, and then the to is what it should end at. So I'm going to pick a selector, and what I've done is, let's see, right now I have these links selected, which are actually my buttons at the bottom. So if I scroll over here, I have this link selected, which is one of these two buttons right there. And you can kind of scrub across the timeline and see the animation in real time. So you can sort of go back and forth. If I come back over here, then of course my heading is moving. As you can see right there, it makes space for our text right below it. And then the opacity changes. So let me go ahead and click on this text. I'll scroll to right there. And what you can see is I have this from with the opacity of zero and the two set to the opacity of one. So that's the only thing that changes on this one. For our headline here, what I have is a from with a translate of Y20, so it pushes it down 20 pixels, and then the two is just back at Y0, so it goes back up to where it should exist. So that one is really simple. These buttons are moderately more complex, so we have a combination of what we just did. So we have a from with a translate X of negative 20 on the left button, and then we have a two to an opacity of one and a translate X of zero. The inverse is true on the right button. It's just simply translate X positive 20 instead of negative, and then it just goes back to zero. Now our SVG down here is pretty cool because I actually have two different animations here to achieve the look that we want. So I have a from with an opacity of zero just to an opacity of one, and I wanted that to be quicker. So you can see I have a shorter animation here, and that is covering the opacity. The second one here is just a from, and it's basically just a translate of negative five to positive five, and then what I've done is use the repeat negative one, so it keeps doing it over and over, and then I have the yo-yo effect on. Then I changed the ease functionality to elastic, and GSAP gives you a bunch of different ease, so you're probably familiar with ease from CSS transitions like ease and out, and that sort of thing. These are a little bit cooler, and you can actually look up if you just type in GSAP ease, there's kind of a visualizer tool so you can see what those look like. Now, of course, there's all kinds of other things in here that we'll get to at some point in the future, but for the sake of this video, I want to focus on these two pages. And we're also going to recreate this entire layout, so if this is overwhelming, don't worry, we're going to get to that in just a little bit. Now, kind of like in an Oxygen Builder site, you also have this previewing dropdown, so if I wanted, I could change to any page or post across my site. So if I switch to the Socials tab, this is the effect that I was talking about earlier. So, my timeline hasn't changed here, it's still the other one. And there, there is my <laughs> slight unfamiliarity with the tool. What I had to do was go to my library tab and pick out the timeline from my socials page and not just preview it in the builder. So you can switch back and forth like that. That would be applicable if you turned on an animation to be global, which you can do by clicking this button. But what I did here is like I explained earlier on in the video, I just created the animation once and you can see here my from, I put it on the class of social wrapper. So it applies to all of these because I stuck a class on those. I set the opacity to zero to begin with and the translate to negative y of 20 or y negative 20. Then down here I said stagger each by half a second from the from the start of you know the sequence of divs. The ease is on default and then the two is basically all of that except I just changed the ease. So you don't actually have to have a two destination because if there's nothing in your two, then what that means is just gonna go back to its original position. So essentially zero. So this is really cool. When I first did this, I created this animation six times and put it in the timeline, and so there's a bunch of different things, and then Stagger came in to save the day, so you can apply this to multiple elements without having to recreate it. So now what I want to do is essentially recreate both of these layouts, the Tesla page and also these socials, and show you how to actually build these. So this is really cool. Now I was going to delete this timeline, but I wanted to show you that you can also export these, which is pretty sweet, so that's going to be really nice functionality. You can also duplicate them. I'm going to delete them and then we're just going to recreate it. So if I switch back over here in my builder, we're gonna go back to the Tesla page and look at that real quick. Now, so you'll notice I have a copy of the home page, and those animations would not apply to this copy of that page, and that's because I didn't set any of these animations to be global. If you did that, you could click on this right here, and what you did would apply anywhere, so that's probably going to be applicable for things like headings or other elements that should animate the same way across your entire site. Even if you were to apply it into a class in Oxygen, it's only going to apply the animation to that page unless you click that global settings checkbox. So just be aware of that. Now we're gonna start from the very beginning. So I wanna create a new timeline here. So we're gonna create an entirely new timeline here. I wanna start from the beginning. So let's call this home animations for video or something like that. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on save. And as soon as I do that, then you can see that it puts that in my library tab here. So that is nice and handy. I don't need this here and keyboard shortcuts aren't quite working yet, uh, but I know that's coming. That is something that I mentioned to David and Rados that I would love to see is control C, control V, undo, all of those sorts of things. Now, so the main thing you're gonna look at is what sort of triggers you're after. So under page events, this is what we already talked about with the page load. You have scroll trigger, which is awesome. This is something we'll get into in a different video because there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. And then animations, you can have click and hover. And in the future, when they add things like class toggling, I think this is gonna be extremely powerful. So we need to go ahead and build our first selector. So what we're gonna do is make sure we have our from tab selected here and we're gonna choose the custom selector. This lets us pick in the visual editor what selector we wanna work with. So I'm gonna click on this heading right here and you wanna be really careful about which element you check because if I chose this div right here, it's actually the wrapper that's containing this header and this text. So what I actually want is the ID for this particular headline. Now, of course, in the example, this heading just basically moved up about 20 pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these. This is carrying over from before, which I feel like is not correct, but uh, it's also probably operator error. So what we're gonna do is use translate. We're gonna go with Y and we can click the pixel and the percentage here to switch back and forth with our units. So we're just gonna go with the Y of 20 pixels and we're at the end of our animation here. So we can actually move the timeline and watch it in real time. So if I put my playhead back to the beginning, of course, I've set no animation yet on the text below, which is why it's still there. But then what we can do is just basically leave the two empty. We don't even need to set the translate on it. And it's just gonna move itself back to translate Y of zero for us. So that one is basically done. Then what we can do is actually add in a new selector here. We're gonna do the same thing. So our custom selector here, we're gonna mouse over this text here. We're gonna go with text block 40-8. And in our from, we're gonna go with opacity of zero. And then same thing. We can just leave the two empty and it's gonna pop in. But we would need to time this to be where we want it on the timeline. So we can start moving this around. If we want the gap to be a little bit more, then you can certainly do that. You can make the heading start a little bit after the page load. So as the page loads, nothing happens for just a second and then it moves up. So let's just go take a look at the real Tesla site again and kind of get a refresher for how that works. So it's very brief. It maybe sits there for, you know, three tenths of a second before it starts moving. So we could essentially just pull this way back to somewhere right there. And then our text below, as soon as the heading is in place, it basically pops right in. So if we come back over here with our playhead and we just click on play, you can see there is the animation right there. So that is perfect. These two are obviously very simple. So now we'll get into some cooler ones with these buttons and the animation down there. There's the playhead that I was looking for earlier. <laughs> I didn't know where it was, but now I do. So what I'm gonna do is add in a new selector here. So this headline is not the selector we want. It's actually going to be this button. Here's another example of, of selecting the correct selector. So I'm gonna use this link as our link wrapper. So this one has a from opacity of zero. Then the other thing we have is a translate X. So I think it was something like 20 pixels as well. That's kind of seems to be the theme, theme here. And actually that is the wrong direction. We need negative 20 in this case. So then if we do that, you can see it kind of fades in and moves in at the same time. And what we could do is right click on this one. We could say duplicate. We're gonna change our selector from link 45.8 to this other one over here, which is 48.8. And then we're just gonna change the translate X to a positive value of 20. And there we go, just like that. Both buttons are animated, no problem at all. Now I think these actually should be right under this text block. I wanna refresh real quick and see if those buttons come in at the same time. They sure do, yeah. So what we would need to do is just simply drag those animations there. And then we are going to create one more selector. It actually creates at the playhead, so I should have moved it over here to make it nice and easy. And then this animations from selector is going to be our icon here. So we'll do, do SVG fancy icon, which is the ID of that element. That one starts off with an opacity of zero and comes in sooner than the rest of the animation. So we're gonna create this short little animation right here, about half a second. We're gonna push it to the end of this. This one's opacity is going to start at zero and just ramp to one. So that's all we need to do for that one. And then I will just simply, oh, I can't get to that with my mouse. There we go, duplicate. And then this one here, we're just gonna make a little bit longer. I'm going to remove the opacity ramp. 
Then what I'm gonna do here is over in our left-hand side, I'm gonna go with a repeat of negative one, so it keeps repeating over and over. You could set this to five if you want the animation to only go five, for instance. I'm gonna turn on the yo-yo, and then with ease, I'm gonna change this to elastic was what we used. Now we didn't actually tell it to do anything though on this animation, so what we need to do is translate, we did from, in our Y, I think I set it to um, five pixels, and then to a translate of negative five pixels, something like that. So hopefully I did this the correct direction. I always get these confused. So that is actually moving backward. So in our from, we're gonna change this to negative five. It was a very subtle animation and then go with five and we can save this. Now to see this on the front end, we could go ahead and just view this page. So I'll change this to our home, I believe it was copy. So there we go. There is the effect and the button animation down here, this little SVG is not quite right. It's not you know, completely accurate to the Tesla homepage, but as you can see, we got all of those animations created and what was that, like seven minutes? And this is someone that is definitely new to this software. So the timing of these things probably could be adjusted a little bit, but I do love this animation. It's just so simple and clean and it really just brings this site a step up, I feel like. So there's that page. I'm happy with this as it is for you know a first look video. I think that looks really cool. And all of this stuff is still functional, of course. So let's go ahead and switch over to the socials page and we'll recreate that. So here we are on the front end and if I refresh, because I deleted that timeline, nothing happens. There is no animation on this. So I just wanted to show you that we're gonna be starting from scratch here. So in our builder, I'm gonna create a new animation and I'll call this socials page. I'll switch our preview here to the socials tab. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's gonna be page event, page load, and then after load. Our from selector is going to just be our main wrapper here, but this time I'm gonna choose the actual class that I gave it in oxygen rather than the ID so that this applies to every element on our page that has this class, which is called social wrapper. So our opacity is going to be zero. And then our, actually I'm gonna leave the opacity at one so I can see it. Y is going to be 20. So it just pushes it down a little bit and that is wrong. I'm so bad at this. My X and Y axis, and then <laughs> positive and negative is uh, clearly needing some work. And then I wanna change my opacity back to zero. So then it's, what's gonna happen is it's gonna ramp down like that, which I mean, that looks okay as it is, but I think the other way we had it with that stagger effect is cooler. So what we're gonna do is go down here to stagger. We're gonna change each one to 0 0.5 seconds. It could be one second, whatever you want. And the default is start. So it's just gonna pick the first div and go down. You could also reverse it to go with end if you wanted. So it could be backwards, which is pretty cool. And we probably wanna change this animation to be a bit longer, maybe like two seconds, something like that. And each one is half a second and we have six seconds. So we'd actually need it to be three. So there it is right there. If we go ahead and save this, we go look on the front end. Bam, look at that. So it even still has a nice fade effect. It's just so soft and subtle and it just comes in like that. So as you notice, we didn't even change anything in the two tab. And that's because we just wanted it to basically reset to its default position in two. So we didn't need to do that. So of course we've built these two demos now. I think they both look amazing. This tool is absolutely awesome and I'm barely scratching the surface. So we're gonna have a lot more videos on this. Let me know down in the comments below what you'd like me to build next and I will definitely invest some serious time in this tool. It's something that I'm adding to my repertoire and you'll see lots more content here on the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.